So, um, following the meeting to order, this is the work session meeting for the City of Minnetrista Council, and it is April 4th, 2022. Uh, first order, I'll just uh, do roll call. We have our City Clerk, Don Motzko, our City Engineer, Allison Fowski, Public Works Superintendent, Gary Peters, Council President, our Kathleen Refkin, um, John Chamberlain, Pam Mortensen, Ann McGregor is not with us this evening. No, she has not passed. She just is not. <laughs> just tonight. <laughs> that did, I, as soon as I said that, I thought, gee, that sounds like maybe that's not so good. Um, she will join us next time. Um, I'm Lisa Whalen. I'm the mayor. And then we also have um, David Abel, Community Development Director, Brian Grimm, Finance Director, and um, Ali Paul Fos, uh, Director of Administration. So we have... Um, <coughs> Three items, uh, discussion of re resolution in support of the local decision-making, and then St. Bonifacius water discussion, and then the Gene Lehner Park discussion. So we will start with the uh, resolution. Who, that's David, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say on this. This is mostly a League of Minnesota Cities uh, uh, initiative, if you will. They've sent out... Uh, draft uh, resolution of support which I've included the template in your packet along with the information from the League of Minnesota Cities website with uh, background information and links that they have provided regarding um, th this issue and topic. As you can also see there's uh, a, attached in your packet there's a list of 91 cities in the state of Minnesota that have already adopted this resolution of uh, support. And so before I uh, was uh, making any assumptions in terms of whether or not the council was willing to do something like this, we thought it would be uh, in our best interest to bring it to you in a work session just to bounce off of uh, you whether you're interested or not. Um, I know some uh, things like this in the past um, were not well received uh, in terms of diving into legislation at a city council level. So, again, just wanted to touch base with council to see whether there was interest. If there's not, fine. If there is, we'll bring it to a, the, the, uh, the resolution of support in a city format to a future city council uh, agenda, likely under consent. Um, again, just looking for direction from council on if this is something that uh, you're willing to pursue. Again, I have not personally done a deep dive on all of this information. This is a league-driven uh, <coughs> initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, a glance through what's in the packet and some of the links. Did have a brief discussion with our city attorney about it. Um, many, if not all, of the cities that they represent are on that list, mm -hmm. so have, have done their ready. So they, they didn't have any concerns, but again, it's merely up to the council whether you want to uh, support or consider something like that or, or not. And that's simply what we're look, doing here is checking in with you on that. Thanks, David. Um, did you have a chance to kind of read it? This is really, really overreaching by the state into the authority of <coughs> local elected officials. So this is, and it's serious. So the people behind this or the group behind it are the builders, basically the the. What do they call themselves? They don't Batsy, call. Yeah, 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 yeah. but they don't call themselves <laughs> anyhow. But they're the the developers and builders in the metro area, and they want to dictate to the cities basically what we can and can't do, including how much we can charge for um, uh, permits and and building permits. And so there's been this has been going through the legislation for two years now. My understanding is it did not pass. I don't think it passed recently, but I think what they're afraid of is how far it got this year, that it might it's gonna come up <coughs> next year again. And I'm just I just think it's very, very bad uh, policy and bad politics for the state to dictate what the cities can and can't do regarding um, land use. Um, those those are local decisions that I think need to stay with the local elected officials. That's my opinion. <coughs> so by signing this, <clears throat> that keeps us then where we keep having the jurisdiction or the authority to make those decisions. If, again, it's just basically telling our state legislatures, hey, don't do this. We are opposed to this legislation. That's what it's saying. It's not guaranteeing that something won't come up next year and won't go forward, but at least it would help. Trying to make our voice heard, right. basically, mm -hmm. not right. sitting on the sidelines on the, right. on the issue. So. 
the <coughs> League of Minnesota Cities becomes kind of a focal spokesman listing all the cities that have passed the resolution? Yeah. To, they, they already are an advocate for the cities. You know, they right, already but now we're yeah. specifically on this issue. We're saying yay or nay or right, right, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Sort of strength in numbers a little bit too, right? More people yeah. that sign right. on to it, right, numbers. right, yeah. I think they'll be especially if there's, and I think most of the cities are kind of in this general seven, eight, ten county metro area because that's really what they're targeting. And I mean, they've even gone so far as at times tried to get try to put <coughs> limits, like I said, on building permits and how they have to be, um, uh, the, the formula that has to be used and, and all of that. And, and also they, they want to have control over PUDs. And, and I mean, there's just, there's, it's just too far reaching. Well, how does this fly with the Met Council? I mean, when you have your comp plan and you've got your different levels and then they say, well, you don't have any low income housing, you need to have that. Well, wait a minute, it's not in our comp plan. I mean, how do they... Well, that's... See, here's the thing that I don't like. I think that this legislation is, they're putting it under the guise that this, <coughs> that, that they want to be able to build affordable housing, but there's so many other tools in the toolkit that they can use. They don't need this legislation. This legislation wouldn't only affect affordable housing, it would affect everything land use in your city. It's not just, that's my understanding. Yeah. Um, do you know? Yeah, it's about money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they involved in the comp plan um, right now, the, the comp plan guidelines or anything? The, the this builder? This organization. The, I don't know. I mean. Because they, they're pretty stringent even on that, of right. how many we, houses we have to build. Right. Per acre, yeah, um, you know, but that's a Met Council. Yeah, yeah, um, that's that's more Met Council, and and this is this is more dictating where PUDs can go, what the density can be, if they see. We have it right now. We can say, and there's one coming up tonight. There's a sketch plan coming up. Okay, we could say no. We don't think this is qualifies as a PUD. So we can say that. Now, my understanding, again, um, with this legislation is the developers can actually dictate when and where they can use PODs. So we would have no say in it. That's one thing. Oh, and if this? If this, if this legislation goes through the way it's written. Now, it, like I said, last year they tried to put it through, and it didn't, didn't fly. This year it's gotten a little bit further. And I think what the um, league is concerned about is maybe next year that it's going to have more. Yeah, right. yeah. <coughs> yeah. And they'll get in the Senate this year, so they're worried with the yeah. election, the changes in right. the Senate. Then. Right. right. <clears throat> and um, obviously, if this passes, then the Met Council is just going to adopt their standards to align with the bill, and then the, all your comp plans will need to change. Mm -hmm. Could have, yeah. That, I mean, that's yeah. what will happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One, well, actually, the Met Council probably is not the, the overall theme of what they're going for they probably wouldn't like but it's more density is what yeah. they're after and would give them so the Met Council's obviously you know from that standpoint would be fine with it but you're right that's exactly what would happen yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with the other 103 cities now on their website so oh sure yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say I would definitely be in support of being uh, along with those other cities that have signed this yes okay Sounds good. Um, St. Bonnie water discussion. So I'll hand it over to Allison, <laughs> and I'll weigh in, and Gary <clears throat> might weigh in too. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. So um, St. Bonifacius um, Council has responded to Minatrista's request to open up a discussion on the inter with regards to the interconnect. Um, and included some uh, analysis by their engineer um, from Bolton and Mank. And so staff wanted to take this opportunity to, to kind of take a look back because I think um, there was a misunderstanding in what Minatrista's ask was of St. Bonifacius. Um, the, the, the calculations um, that Bolton and Mank performed was based on supplying all of 
Hunter's Crest and future development in that area. Um, and whereas uh, what we've discussed here um, with the council and staff is supplemental water. Um, and so we kind of took a step back and thought, well, how do we quantify that? Because supplemental can mean, it, di it differs year to year. Um, so what we did is we took a look at what the tower readings were. We had some tower, we had good data showing what the water demands were um, before the watering bands went on, uh, the ban went on, and what the, what the demand was in between the two watering bands. And so um, we went and took a look at that, and we said, well, we had 12 and a half weeks of a very hot, extremely dry <laughs> summer. Um, if, if we took, take a look at what that demand was prior to the first ban and in between the first ban and second ban, what would we anticipate that total um, supplemental water to be? So um, we ran that calculation, which is on page 12 of your packet, and we come up with 0.6 million gallons. And we go and we compare that to the excess um, capacity that St. Bonifacius has from um, their appropriations permit, which is 11 million gallons, and that's at ultimate development. That's based on the number. Well, their appropriations is 104 million, mm -hmm. less what they generally use. Correct. But we'll get to that, yeah. Correct. So if we look at that, that <clears throat> quote unquote additional supply or additional appropriation that they, have that they would have available upon complete build out of their community, we would be under that. And so um, the reason for bringing this back to Minatrista Council is, is to get a little bit of context as to what we think the misunderstanding was in, in St. Bonifacius' uh, response, because it was, the ask was not to, supply them, uh, not to supply that whole part of the city in its entirety. It was to supplement it. And then also provide a very conservative, in our estimation, um, estimate, because it was an extremely hot, dry summer, um, and we've made some efforts in public education to reduce that watering demand that we're hoping will start to take effect. So, um, and then the third component of that is looking at if the council looks at um, further watering restrictions would again push that demand down. So, um, again, staff is looking for if there's other d information that we can provide to the council um, and, and what next steps the council may want to pursue with um, discussions with St. Bonifacius to kind of clear up some of the misunderstandings in this instance. Thank you. Um, so I asked Allie to print this off. This is an email that um, Ann sent to Allie, and Allie asked if she should send it, and I said, I don't know that she should send it to the whole council because that might violate open meeting laws, but I, because we're here tonight, we can talk about it. She has several points in here that I thought were uh, very good, but I wanted to address them because some of them we've addressed. So just kind of to recap, what happened is um, Allison, our engineer, Public Works Superintendent Gary Peters and myself actually had a meeting with the mayor of St. Bonnie, the city clerk administrator of St. Bonnie, as well as their two public works people. And they, the two guys that they have, they also do their water treatment plant. And we, we preface the meeting by saying, look, this is just a real high-level um, meeting. We just want to see if there's any appetite whatsoever for you to sell us some water I mean, or to share some of your water with us. You know, and I said, this is very high-level. We haven't done any engineering, anything yet. And I said, I know in the past there's been some reluctance. Uh, however, you know, this is a new day, new council. Um, what's your take on it? And immediately the public works um, person said, 100%, yes, this, we're on board. This is great. And we thought the message that we sent was, this is a win. In fact, I think the gentleman said this could be a win-win for both communities. Uh, they have excess capacity. They have excess water that's sitting in the ground that's not doing them any good. It's not putting money in their pocket, mm -hmm. so to speak. We would be purchasing some of that so they could have extra money in their pocket. We didn't spell out all the engineering stuff because we weren't at that point yet. At the end of the meeting, after some discussion, and uh, their um, administrator, Brenda Fisk, uh, brought, uh, brought it up, said that they have a $104 million allocation. Now, last year during the drought, they used $79 million of that allocation. Their highest use year was $88 million. 
And that was when Chemstone was working and in their community using a lot of water. Chemstone is the um, cement company. Okay, so they were using a lot of water. They no longer are there. So even when Chemstone was there, they were using 88 million gallons a year. So they still had a significant amount of excess. So, however, um, she also pointed out and was a little bit hesitant because there's about 40 acres that are undeveloped that could be developed. And, again, depending on the density and depending on the use, um, they kind of came up with like 93 million. That's where this 93 million has come into play. That's what their total usage <coughs> would need to be. And that's why there's that 11 million that we're saying they still have 11 million capacity. Having said that, when they had the meeting, I don't know if any of you had a chance to, to watch it or to listen to it, they really got, um, they got confused or maybe misunderstood what we were asking. And, um, I mean, things like, well, they're going to be building another water tower, right? No, we never said we're building another water tower. We're in the process of doing another water treatment plant. So we thought um, somehow there was a miscommunication. And um, I think it might be good to go back and give them actual numbers and actual, a little more detail. And we thought maybe it would be good for, again, maybe the three of us to actually talk to the entire council so that there's no loss in translation, so to speak. But Anne um, made some comments and, you know, her comment about, you know, never allow a customer to put their hands on a product uh, first, before we can, and we so we thought we did that with this meeting. You know, we thought at a very high level, just kind of tell us whether there's an appetite. And at the end of that meeting, we also said, uh, next steps. What are the next steps? And I suggested, you know, maybe under council reports or staff reports, if you could just ask your council if there any if there's any interest in talking to us about this. Well, it went further than that, as you could tell. And that's really not what we were asking for. We're just saying, hey, tell us, are you even interested in, is there even an appetite to talk to us about this? And so um, it kind of went askew. And, um, but we, we thought and we had offered that we would go back. We'd say, you know, if there is an appetite, we could come back and we could talk to the whole council with some actual engineering numbers. The engineers could get together and talk beforehand so that we have some more concrete numbers to share with you. So that didn't happen, as you know, from the, the meetings that you watched. But uh, So Anne is right. You don't do that, and we didn't do that. And then, um, and then she said... Um, Two, it's really going to be hard to kind of backtrack, and maybe we didn't give them the right message or a clear enough message as to what we were looking for. Because we could do permanent, or we could do temporary, or we could do full or not. I mean, there's all kinds of options we could do. Uh, so maybe we need to go back and talk to them again and kind of let the whole council know what our what the options are that we're asking for. Maybe Gary? Well, if I just may add in, when we were there too, I mean, we made it perfectly clear to begin with, you know, like you said, it was a high level. And like I said, you know, this is going to be a temporary issue at this point, you know, until we get um, the next treatment plant built. I don't know where they came up with water tower, but we said treatment plant. So, I mean, it was that. So we did express that it would probably be a temporary thing for the next two to three years, depending on how long it took. So I don't know where the clarity got missed on that. Um, and then we said, too, that, and I said, I said, before it ended, once you guys decide, I mean, there's a lot of engineering between Bold and Mink and WSB that has to take place. This was all brought up at this meeting that before any decision can be made, how much we even need, we have to know your capacity. You know, I said, your water gurus had to talk to our water gurus to figure all this out and before we even started. So, I mean, we did cover all our bases and presented information that we had just as a question, are you interested? So, yeah, right. So, um, and unfortunately, there were some, if you watched the meeting, some facts, some numbers that were put out there that aren't correct numbers. So that, that's the other thing that needs to be clarified. We're not, I think, 
their engineer was given authority to do a very, very high level, very cursory, quick glance kind of thing. And that's maybe where some uh, misunderstanding or some miscalculations came into place um, on the number of uh, units that would need water and then how much water would they need, that kind of thing. So I think, um, to Anne's point, you know, we need to point out that there is, it's a win-win situation because they have excess we would, that we would be buying from them. So not, they don't give it to us. We would be buying it from them. And um, that those details need to be worked out, of course, but um, I think they misunderstood on a number of different levels. So, so we brought this back. So then at their meeting... Then they said, no, we're not interested in selling or, you know, sharing our water with them. They also, the other comment that they made is, um, in the thing they said, you know, we only have $104 million appropriated. However, the DNR did indicate some willingness to look at their appropriations should we be sharing water resources. So they didn't for sure say, yes, they'll increase it, but they said it, there would be some consideration there. So... Questions? Um, well, I did view at the city council meeting, and there was a very obvious miscommunication in between what you guys said <coughs> and what they absorbed. So I do think we need to make an effort to go back and clarify, because this is what I got out of the meeting. First of all, when you pull up their uh, meeting notes, first of all, it says, St. Bonnie and the engineer Bolton make findings of current water system is not able to extend water service to Minnesota, Minnesota without significant upgrades and the DNR approval, which is highly unlikely. So first of all, they're under the impression now that they have to do significant upgrades. Right. And in our meeting, that was not discussed at right. all. Right. Um, also, DNR approval, highly unlikely. No, the DNR was very, uh, they thought this was a very good idea, correct? They said they would highly consider it. Again, it's not 100%, but they right now they have excess capacity. So the DNR wouldn't get, give them more now. But if, if down the road this continues, and if it were a permanent thing, and they needed more capacity, I believe they would receive yeah. that. Um, Madam Mayor, members of council, my recollection from Minitrista, so this was a meeting between Minitrista and the DNR to talk about what our next steps are when we were looking at the going into Mount Simon Hinckley. We talked a little bit about the interconnect with um, Saint, that we have with St. Bonnie and the DNR. <coughs> First of all, across the board, the message I heard is they're in support of inter interconnections between communities. They like to see that. Um, second, when we talked about... Um, you know, it, what the DNR stance would be on opening up that interconnect either on an interim or permanent basis, um, what, what involvement the DNR would have in that process. Um, my notes are that it would be considered, quote, fairly simple um, if, we sta if they stayed within their current appropriations. Now, it's paperwork is what I read into that, but we would certainly pursue that if, if St. Bonnie was open to that interconnect. Um, and then if there's... If there's a need to increase the appropriation, there would certainly be additional work on top of that. I don't know what that entails, but that's that was my recollection from our meeting with the DNR. And obviously, if we ever, well, we could even as pursue that question with the DNR <coughs> so that that could be answered, mm -hmm. you know, if they were in need of that um, reassurance. Yeah. Well, it was very, it was Jake was the presenter. Mm -hmm. Is that the Bolton and Meek engineer? My understanding is Jake would be like my peer. He would be their city engineer, okay. and then there's other folks at Bolton and Meek that he would <coughs> likely turn to that are experts in water distribution, similar to what Greg Johnson is for the city of Minnetrista. Okay, because they didn't introduce them at the point that I watched the meeting. They might have prior, but anyway. But what he stated very clearly is this was going to be very expensive. Um, it would be like in the million dollars for them to, to let us share or do this project that we are asking them. And that is not the case whatsoever. So I think the council, walking into just watching the meeting, I think the council members 
thought this is ridiculous that we were being asked to spend this kind of money and and we wouldn't even want to support it. So I think that's what the council walked away with and of course they said no. Yeah. And when we look at you know there's no matter how this plays out it if there's an interconnect of any sort, I think both communities would agree that you would want to meter it. So there's certainly a cost with metering, which you can talk about the cost share, but I, I, I think what um, Jake was referring to is if, if, if St. Bonnie was to serve all of Hunter's <coughs> Crest currently and in full build out, the infrastructure costs that St. Bonnie would have for additional water treatment capacity and so on um, and storage that's what I think he was alluding to as far as what the cost would be okay well I think we need to um, go back and give them more detail um, lay out the cost and um, it definitely address the whole council how would you project doing that start back where you were and then then step to the council and it sounds like the misinformation, the council's only listening to what was fed to them, and it sounds like from your initial meeting is where that misinterpretation is taking but the place. the mayor was at your initial meeting, and at no point during that council meeting did she correct them. Right. So you went to them and she either forgot or didn't care or didn't remember. Either way, I don't, I don't know how you... She was there. She heard what you guys asked. Um. Their mayor is new, and I don't think she maybe understands water infrastructure as well as, as we do because we've been dealing with it. Well, but um, anyone's going to know the difference between supplementing for three months of the year versus fully supplying an entire subdivision. I mean, I don't know that much about water, and I know the difference. <laughs> And when I, I, I think the, it might just be they don't want to do it, and this was their out. Could be. Well, what they were told, I mean, by well, I mean, two, I mean, they were talking expansion of the water treatment plant, drilling a new well, I mean, which is all inaccurate. And um, I kind of talked to the public works guys; they were never even asked any questions beyond that, so they weren't even asked. I mean, the people that you know are involved with it, so they had no input in it to it either. So. Um, you know, and this, you know, and I don't know if they even took notes at the meeting. I don't know. I don't remember. I know the mayor did not. Yeah, you would have thought they'd be writing stuff down. I don't know if Brenda did or not. I don't think much was taken even in the line of notes. So I think a lot of it was misconstrued right from the beginning, you know, not remembering it. So, you know, I, I think just to go there and explain, look, you know, this is what we're asking for, not this, would probably be the best step. And I think avoiding the whole communication fail again i think it would probably be the best to explain it right to the entire council what you know hey this is what we're asking for not this you know we're not asking for the taj mahal we're just asking for you know a little spit to be turned on every now and then to help us out you know and it's only going to be hopefully for knock on wood three years or four years whatever it takes to get the treatment plant built and it's only going to be during the summer rush so and you know i mean from what i understand too this has been open in the past uh, for stuff before so I know I mean from what I've heard, heard from Mike it's happened way back so I mean it works so we know it'll it'll flow both ways so I mean we even brought up the cost share of the metering that has to take place and that wasn't even mentioned in there you know stuff at all so is that the only potential cost to either city to do this the valves are there. All we have to do is meter. Everything is there, so this would be the cost of inserting between the two valves, theirs and ours, um, a manhole structure with a, with a meter in it. How expensive are the meters? Hard to say. I don't know what size pipe. I believe it's six inch down there on Wildwood where we put one and the other one. I believe that's an eight inch. Six or eight. It's one an was eight. an eight inch. It's an eight inch and the six inch down there. So, yeah, I don't know what, what that, you know, and what we would put on if it'd be a, I'm assuming it would just be a simple manual retype thing. I don't think we'd want anything real fancy on or anything like that. But, you know, the beauty of it is because it was brought up that they are actually reconstructing Glacier Road 
Um, and that's why I say in conjunction with when they do theirs, maybe we should look at doing our side. But the road's getting tore up already. That'd be a perfect time to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, there you go. We put our structure in and we're done. So the other one's in a grass area right off of Highland and Wildwoods. So there's no disturbance of any, you know, roadway or blacktop. So that, you know, is a plus. So, I mean, the co- you know, there's some cost savings all the way around that, you know, but that's all stuff that needs to be discussed. It was brought up. I mean, that's all stuff that needs to be discussed in the future, and we said right. that, so. Right. And we mentioned the interconnect and the metering, but, you know, in, in the fact that Wild, or that um, Glacier was going to, that they were going to be redoing Glacier, and so we said, yeah, well, that would be a good time to, um, to, to do the metering then. And quite honestly, when we walked away from that meeting, I was like, wow, you know, the mayor's on board, the public works people are on board. This this could really happen. So it just turned, I mean, just took a whole different turn. So, um, But um, I think we'd have to go in there with some real firm numbers. Like this is the max we would probably need um, based on last year's drought, which would be the max. And, and then how does the engineering work? With our new water tower now, they—I don't think that they would need any more storage capacity, because we have 900 gallons of storage capacity, and and they have 300 and what do they have? 10? 300, I think. Is it not? Uh, or is it not even? A, what is it? I thought it was. It I don't 30? think it's that much. Okay. Is it but I mean, you know. But they have elevated, and then they have in ground. They have an in ground tank too. Yes. Right. So. Um, I mean, there would be plenty. For, yeah. You know, and Don did supply um, numbers of what we sold for the last three years for, you know, the entire year yeah. of number of gallons of water through Hunter's Crest. So, you know, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, that'd be the biggest area that we'd look at supplying. So, you know, I mean, their numbers didn't come close to what we even sold. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so... And we could put those numbers together mm-hmm. before we would meet. <clears throat> okay. Um, they did say, Jake did say, he didn't know how uh, we got our numbers. That was, I wrote that down, quote. And um, then he said that he did not see our numbers before he made that presentation that night. Yeah, we didn't so, have any. We never gave him any numbers. Yeah, That's why he didn't so, see any. Yeah, so they didn't, They were talking about things they didn't even know about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not all the council was there. You said there's five council members? Yeah. They weren't all there. No. I so if we could present to the entire council, you're hitting, I think there were only three there. So you've got two council members that weren't even at this meeting at all, that have heard nothing. Also, the other thing is, um, if we could put together um, what kind of revenue would um, they make off of this, um, I think that may speak to them as far well, as that's buying the water. It's a little, well, Allison did a little one in here um, kind of on, on what they would have made this summer based on the n- amount of water um, that we would be using. But... It, it all depends on how it... Right. Works. If at least we could show them something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it was last year's numbers, if it was last year's numbers, you know, it is what it is. But I would give them something right. to show right. that, hey, we're this, not getting, you know, right. we are paying for this. You're leaving, so. you know, four or $5,000 on the table every quarter, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, whatever it is. I mean, it might be more than that. It might be less, but, um, yeah. Okay. What is their water quality? Well, they I mean our residents going to notice a substantial difference if we do end up doing this. I mean, no, they have the same filtration we do. I mean, they have basically the same steel filter, uh, gravity filtration, green sand, same type of chemical. Um, actually, they have probably a little bit different competition because they're coming out of the Mount Hinkley, so they're moving some um, radium. So it's a slightly different setup, but same quality. Then it's not Hinkley; it's Simon. Mount Simon Hinkley. Mount Simon Hinkley. Oh, okay, Mount Simon Hinkley. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. Okay. So, what would be the next steps? Just well, meeting I with think their engineer and then trying to get on like a special presentation over there with the correct numbers and information. I think or? trying to get on the uh, on a council meeting with the correct numbers. Well, and I think you have to have it all 
list it out so you can literally hand it to all of them and say, this is what we're actually asking for. <laughs> we do not want you to do this. <laughs> and this is, I mean, this is helpful right here. This is just what we would have had that time. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is kind of worst case scenario for one month. I mean, so, I mean, you're kind of looking at, here you go. This is you know, just rough numbers. I mean, they're not exact, but, you know, that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for 40 million gallons, like they were saying. I mean, you know, I mean, maybe a million at max if it's super dry and, you know, that way, but, you know. So, kind of to give this a little bit of background, back in 99, I think it was, um, the city went to St. So, Hunter's Crest was just being um, developed, okay? It was in the very early stages. And the city said, okay, well, we're going to need water down there. Let's talk to St. Bonnie. And I... I, I don't know if I was on the council or just coming on the council, but so the city said, well, let's talk to St. Bonnie to see if they're willing to sell us water. And, and there was a water committee <coughs> informed, and I wasn't part of that, so I don't know all of the details. But there were talks, and for some reason or other, again, I don't know, but for some reason or other, those talks ended up where, no, St. Bonnie's going to keep their system, and Minatrista's going to have to provide their own water. And the water tower on Kings Point Road was underutilized. In fact, they had to, it was sometimes, I don't know if it ever froze, but it was close to freezing a lot of times because it's underused. And so the city said, okay, our best bet then, least expensive, and what we can do right now is run the water from Kings Point Road down to Hunter's Crest. And then it will serve the areas in between as well. So Turtle Creek came online afterwards. So, um, and ever since then, there really has, hasn't been any talk, but there's always been a reluctance. Our understanding, anyhow, has always been a reluctance from St. Bonnie to do a permanent or even temporary interconnect. That's why we thought, let's go and talk to the mayor and the public works and administrator to see if there's any appetite 22 years later. Has that changed? That's why we didn't go in with a lot of details. We just thought, hey, give us an idea. Is there an appetite for this or not? That's that's why we didn't do the full blown, you know, kind of thing. We thought we might be wasting our time. But so, I would say, if possible, we want to give them an idea of what the meters would cost. They might just look at the cost of meters and go, no, we're not going to pay 50% of that. And that would abruptly end all future discussions. So. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they did say that they um, needed to do that, and they were aware of that. that I think they they'd be willing to pay half because yeah. it's water that they're selling to us, so they'd want to know how much they're selling to us. So, of course, it would be the, in their best interest to have the meters there. So I think we'd have to have the cost of the meters. Um, I think we'd have to have some idea or, or be able to say, no, you don't have to in increase or do anything to your water treatment plant other than what your normal usage is. I mean, we'd have to be able to tell them something. Um, yeah, I, I think these are all great things, and I think if we look at you know, looking at this really cursory analysis of what the demand was for 2021, because prior to that time, we weren't in the situation where there was there wasn't sufficient capacity for for our cell system based on the demand for irrigation. So, um, I think that's a good amount of information to provide with them. This is our best estimate on what we would have been looking at last year, and if you're if you want to discuss a cap on the appropriation let's start talking about that and use that as a basis it could flux one way or another but let's it's a starting point mm -hmm. and i think using last year's number being it was a really bad drought <laughs> um that's almost probably the worst case scenario on their end as well yes mm -hmm. yes I so agree. actually that is a good thing to present to them because we all know that is not the normal. Mm -hmm. And we hope it's you know, not the new normal, but you know, it would be a great uh, number to run by. And the other thing we need to address is they were saying if they had, if those 40 acres were to develop. But if the 40 acres were to develop, even if they came in this year, 
they wouldn't be building and or providing full build out for several years and so and by that time we would probably have um, our our situation our new plant up and running and again it's supposed to be temporary mm -hmm. right. yeah I think there was some discussion <clears throat> I'm just going off recollection but I think we, we kind of discussed you know even after Minatrista's current needs is does it make sense to have any kind of appropriation because we have that long jog along Highway 7 to to, to feed that and we, we started talking about that and then we were t started talking about water tower levels on who would feed who and that's where you start getting into like it's it's that's too detailed at this time so perhaps that's where the, the misunderstanding was is because we started talking about that a little bit more you know, do we just look at this short-term basis, or does it make sense to have an interconnect at some point in perpetuity of a certain amount? But that's the only thing I could think of that would cause. Well, that. you could, yeah, and you could. That could all be discussed and worked out. Correct. Yeah. Um, when you guys met, did you talk about um, what we've been doing to try to find water? <laughs> we did. So we. I'm trying to. Again, I'm going off memory. Um, we talked a little bit about how we did the test well here in the Tunnel City, Wanawak, and we weren't able to find it. So we wanted to start looking at what the city's options are in, in both short-term and long-term. So we were looking at the long-term solution with getting new wells. However, we know that there's this interconnect, and so we were looking to that as a short-term supplement until we can get our new wells online. Because I think that plays a part, too. I mean, we have done a lot, I mean, a lot of effort to get water for our residents. Mm -hmm. We've drilled a lot of wells unsuccessfully, and I think presenting that to them is like, we have tried. We've gotten the DNR involved, you know. Um, I think that may speak to them, too. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Okay. If it was to say we'd go to, I would definitely ask that, make sure that the uh, City Money Public Works was there to help. Because one thing that they had brought up that uh, Pete Hilgers is their water operator, and he said, too, it would be a nice thing for them because they don't get a lot of water turnover. Even during the summer, right. they don't have a, a lot of irrigated areas. So, I mean, they do have it, but not like we do. So he said it would be nice to even just get the water turnover in the tower. So, I mean, he was, they were both on board with it, I and mean, Bruce Milner's were both on board with it. So it'd be nice to have either both or one of them to make sure they're there to, to say, hey, yeah, we can, you know, it'll help. So. Yep, mm -hmm. I agree. I want to piggyback on that, Gary. We'll need the engineers to be in agreement, too, both from Bolton and Mank and WSB, because otherwise we ran Yeah, that I mean, and, and that's the next level, and, uh, you know, where we're at. And then yeah, right, right. <laughs> So. Yeah. And, and, and we did discuss that. Um, I did discuss that with Greg um, for this. We were talking about that, and Pete did send what they had for tower drawings at the time to see where the elevations are. Um, I would assume, and Greg did too, that when the Kings Point Tower was put in, since it is a interconnect, that that was looked at to make sure that the overflow level is the same height as... Mm -hmm. Um, St. Bonnie's. Um, so mm -hmm. they, uh, WSB does have the rough drawing that was supplied to them, and that's all they could find at, at that time. In a hurry, Pete kind of found that, so they can kind of go off some topo, uh, topographical stuff to, to kind of eliminate that. But they should be pretty close because way back in the day, it should have been you know looked at. So, how old is their treatment plant? Do you know? I have no idea. It's okay. probably pushing. A, I know they just had an upgrade to it, so it's probably twenty years. So they just did some work to it a couple years ago. Oh, okay. They came and just redid a lot of stuff. All right, so we will see what we can do, um, go before the council, entire council, with all of those suggestions, and uh, we'll report back to you. So question, who should be the one to call? It would have to be calling the administrator to see if we can get on an agenda. want a third party to do it that's not involved or someone who's involved in the meeting so another question um, Jasper's coming on board next 
week, a week from today, is that something we want him to to be a part of? I mean, I would think as our administrator. When I did talk to Jasper last week, yeah. with, um, when we sat down, he did say he's very familiar with Bolt Mooney. And so he thought that he had a good relationship with them, so that it would, it would be good to have him there, of course. Um, but... That might be good just as also that it's not someone they've already dealt with and might have, it might have an opinion of or whatever. When is her next meeting? They, they meet well, on well, Wednesdays. Wednesday. It's Wednesdays, but you know, it's yeah. the it's same week as us. The 6th and the 20th. The so. and the 20th. Mm -hmm. so probably not obviously the 6th, but possibly the 20th. Okay. Um, okay. So... Should um, who should I can call? call and ask if we can that we'd like to make a presentation of the council and just to clarify some issues with the water and okay, you know, I can work with somebody. Do you want we can work together and figure out you know, how to title it and just okay. say we want to you know present you know to the council just to clarify some issues that would, mm -hmm. well. And they asked if we'd be interested in cost sharing for the valves, so maybe that can be the. <laughs> Since we're going to be writing up together, we'll take care of that too. We'll, and that you want to do it at the April twentieth, so. Okay. All right. Okay, Gary. It's all on your shoulders. Gary. It's on your shoulders, Gary. We believe in you, Gary. Bring my strong arm, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, any other questions, comments? So um, next we have the Jean Lanier Park discussion. Yeah, Madam Mayor, Council, I didn't write anything up on this because I wasn't exactly certain when this was carried over to the meeting to have discussion on what the layout like that. Um, it was brought up that maybe we need to revisit this for some questions. Um, at that meeting I said, that's great. Asked my questions before plenty of time, so I had some time to... Uh, look into whatever you're wondering and I never heard from anybody and I did hear from the mayor today um, about maybe some off-road parking on 44 which got me thinking well you know she's instead of having this long trail um, start talking to the mayor what if we put a parking lot in there uh, so I did talk to Robert Slipka about it uh, went and if you look at I did give you two um, handouts here the one is just a picture off of Google Maps, which shows the area where the parking lot could go. Um, it'd be roughly 32 by 42. It'd be three spots, one regular, one handicapped with a with an ex, um, van accessible spot, and then we'd have an ADA sidewalk that would go to the trail. It would eliminate the parking spots down on the north side on Trillium. It would eliminate the lawn trail. Um, the tree removals would still be in effect, but we, Randy, Storms, and I stopped out. A lot of these are scrub trees and not very good shape anyways, um, but there'd be room there. So um, I guess, are there, you know, before I pursue that, I mean, are there any questions that you guys had on the original design versus what uh, Mayor Whalen kind of came up with? I, I, I like that concept. There's the room there. Um, is there any other issues that people had before we... You know, before I kind of talk a little more on that, or well, Gary, you and I talked about it. That trail between the tennis court and the playground is that. Do we need that? The trail between the tennis court. So if you look at oh, the, yep, that that would come out. So on the on the, I don't know if you have the original drawing for any there the the concept drawing. There is a gate back in the what it would be the southwest or southeast corner of the tennis court. That's where this is a paved trail now. Um, talking, we would not need this because we would redo this front area, which has a non ADA compliant gate. So this whole front area would be redone to allow entrance to that. Um, only one uh, entrance is needed. That's what we have, similar to the uh, new tennis courts at um, Lyle Park. So we would, you know, that would all come out, which would save that. Okay. Um, you know, the retaining wall down below would come. The retaining walls up top would still stay. Uh, the biggest factor would be, you know, not putting in this trail, um, not doing the gravel work, the, the removals here. You'd still have some work up in this area. The biggest factor, the first thing you would have to tackle is to contact Hennepin County and ask 
um, hello, we want to put a uh, parking lot here. Can we have entrance? That would be the first and foremost to see if they would be even vaguely, <laughs> yes, no, maybe, uh, discussion, you know, as to having another access there. Um, looking at that, though, if you look at Google, we drove out there. You have a great sight line to the to the north and south before the bend. There's lots of room in there. There would be some trees to clear out, of course, to make it a little better sight line for the people coming out. Um, that's not a factor. The ditch line um, doesn't start. If you kind of look at the drawing in here, there is some ditch here, but it's pretty flat where the driveway would be, so we wouldn't need a culvert or anything in there. So that wouldn't be a factor. The fence would have to be kind of taken apart and re redone a little bit, all stuff that we would bring up together um, with the county. So that would be the first step to even see if it's even feasible to even consider this. So step number one, contact the county, say, hey, um, we're interested in doing a parking lot here. You know, what are their thoughts? So that would have to be step number one before this even went any farther. So. How many stalls in the parking lot there? It'd be only three. Okay. Just similar to what's down below, it'd be the exact same type setup where you have one regular, one handicapped, and then um, basically a van accessible spot. So that would be um, two full size and then a partial for where the van accessible is. We put it um, where I have it kind of cross hash because that would be where the trail then would exit their sidewalk to the trail to get to the park. Mm -hmm. And so. keep in mind, there's there is additional parking on Trillium Lane. It's it's uh, correct. There's a there is a cutout there for be, other um, cars. Yeah, that would remain. That'd be the main area for anybody else. I mean, and base if you really want to, I mean, we could just you know label this both handicapped and just leave it as handicapped parking only. But right. But I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, one would probably be sufficient with one extra spot. Yeah, I don't see making it any bigger. I, right. I don't see yeah, a need for that. I don't I don't either. So I was thinking that we could then eliminate the retaining wall, the proposed parking down below, plus that huge long trail that a handicapped person would still have to maneuver, which I thought wasn't the greatest. Plus, you know, if you go there, let's say with your kids in your car is way down here and you're way up there it just seemed awkward to me so and you know if we have to beg the county maybe we can talk to our county commissioner and see if he can help us <laughs> and just kind of a rough estimate um with uh, bob slipka was looking at that with me um we would have, would have some cost savings um it's not going to be you know, seventy five, a hundred thousand, but there would definitely be some cost savings in right. there. Whether we, you know, it, it all depends if we want to, you know, put in B six twelve curb, ribbon curb, whatever it is in there uh, with some, you know, with per, you know, parking slabs. The other thing that we would have is uh, might make the tennis court um, placement a little cheaper if we have this entrance here, so it's easier to get to. Um, not only for us to remove the court surface, uh, but to even come in and pave it. Um, they wouldn't have to bring a you know oh. bobcat everything into the pavers inside. They could come park the truck there. It makes it shorter. It's a little better access. We may end up with a little better cost you know right. that way. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, and, and for the county's perspective, we would say you know hey we'd clean up the whole side of the roads here, make this open it up, get rid of the scrubby. There's a lot of buckthorn that's growing in there, I and mean, we could tell hey we're going to clean this up, make it look nice. It'd be a lot more presentable through there. The park would actually be open and. Yeah, and more noticeable. So I mean, it, it would you would clean up that part of the road. And as far as Hennepin County goes, um, it's only a three-stall parking lot. I mean, it's not like a resident of hundreds. It's actually houses. only it would only be two yeah. actually. It's actually two. It's, it's just a handicapped two. spot and a regular spot with a, with an accessible. So it's only two spots. I can't imagine they'd have a big problem yeah. with that. And we we talked about you know just having them come in and bark, but we don't want them trying to back out onto the road that's you know we have to get that off onto the right off of the right away into there so i mean i i don't see a big issue with it but it's just again it's another access and the county doesn't like access you know there'd be no turn lane or anything but we're not talking a ton of users it's not like a neighborhood where you're going to have you know 50 cars exiting at you know at the morning and coming home at night so you know if this gets used once twice a week maybe who knows it might get used more than that who knows i don't know but at this point i think you know 
first step would be to contact them and kind of submit a plan, just a rough idea like this, and say, you know, are you even open to the concept? So this was remember we talked about that before we so we did um, several years ago ask the county about it just initially what their thoughts were and they um, just said they got to have a darn good reason as to why we need this access so well we have to have handicapped access put it that way and we have to have access to do the tray to redo the tennis court how about that <laughs> so yeah <laughs> they, they point to your local city street where you have access to yeah. that so. well like I said I think it's worth discussing yep. with them and if we need help from our county commissioner to put some pressure on the, on the um, highway department, maybe we can go that route too if need be. Um, so, well, worth an ask. We haven't done this is because of it having to be very expensive to become handicapped yeah. accessible. So, um, I think by doing this, we are servicing the handicap mm -hmm. in a much better way. I mean, the parking right now is terrible. To have somebody handicapped maneuver around there is really bad. This would make it really nice mm -hmm. for them. So. Gary, now do we have to replace all of the trail? No. Okay. So no, the, the parts of the trail that would be replaced would be um, up by the playground area. That would have to um, be the, the grade would have to change a little bit just to get to the playground. Once you're past there, the original trail would stay at that grade. Um, it'd mm -hmm. just be the entrance to the to the two playground areas, and then. Uh, past the um, tennis court there where we're going to redo the entrance to that would have to make sure that is. Um, the only other spot then would be if this would go in would be the trail coming from the parking lot then to mm -hmm. match up to the trail there. So there would be, you know, a okay. little bit of you yeah. know, trail work through there. So Okay. But, you know, basically looking at this, so, you know, most of this 40, almost 43,000 for the 1,225 feet of trail with aggregate would, you know, come out. But, of course, someone would go to the parking lot. You know, so I mean, there, you know, you know, there'd be. You some, might have that retaining. You don't have the retaining wall, so that might. And be you may end up with the retaining wall on this side, but not nearly what we're talking here. So, yeah. I mean, make it to make it to save the trees right. up, that's up in here. You know, there may be a, a retaining wall area that may have to be, you know, put in just to kind of appease the or I should say save the tree, but make it more accessible for them. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. But again, with the, we, I mean, my guys are doing, could do a lot of the work in here, could prep that, could take the trees down, we could remove the top. So we, we have plenty of fill from the ditch work that we've done to come in here and base the whole thing. So, I mean, we could, you know, as a public works, do that. You know, God bless the council for doing what they're doing with the roads. It frees up more of our time to do projects like this. This is this is what you know. This is what we should be doing. Stuff like this to to save the money. I mean, not only you know now we don't have to you know sit there and patch all these roads all summer. We can do stuff like this and and, and you know Gary, be proactive. <laughs> you know what I would also if if we can do this and we're going to move forward with it before we start the work, I think it would be a good idea to notify all the homeowners in the area so they know what's going on. Otherwise. We're going to get calls saying, they're tearing out all the trees. What's going on? I think we just need to inform everybody, um, especially in Trillium Bay and then across the street. Yep, the Hermitage Group, uh, there's two ladies that email me constantly and wanting updates on where we're at. And they're okay. both from Hermitage. They bring their kids across, you okay. know, because they cross up the farther here. Uh, they're very excited to have this done, so, okay. you know, to get it redone. So, I mean, a lot more use you think. And the tennis court is very busy. I mean, it's oh, it's... Good. I would say more probably for pickleball now, sim similar to what's out in um, on the uh, on Shannon Island with Douglas Park too. It's the pickleball group that's oh. really going after everything. So we we would stripe this again for two pickleball courts and the tennis court and stuff. So, okay. but yeah, I mean as far as it goes, I mean I I think this would be a you know as long as we get their blessing, it would it would work. All right, and I was, when I was there the other day, I. And I could be wrong. I didn't see swings. <laughs> they had to be removed um, because the actual swing structure, the foundation, is no good anymore. So it moves and rocks. So we have to take that out before the thing falls over and gets. Well, there will be swings there, though. There will be swings. Yep, yeah, they're back on this side again. Uh, with a, there has to be a fence on this side because of fall protection purposes. But the, the one side is swings where it says playground on the side by, you know, coming up the hill. That will be swings again. Yep. 
Geary, this is a 2023 project now, because I'm guessing... Correct. There's just no way, Willie, uh, you know, you'll have to jump through all these hoops, so there's absolutely no way this will be a 2022. Well, the county, I'm sure, won't get back to us in two days or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> be lucky to get back to us by September, <laughs> you know, so um, hopefully they, you know, and like I say, if if they, we get the approval, however long that takes, now we have to go to the concept of hey, we're back to this, redo it, come with a concept back to you guys, showing the changes to what it'll look like, new costs and that type of stuff. And at that point, then we say yay or nay again, you know, do we want to do it or not, so. Okay. All right. Sounds Great. Good. Thank you. Sounds good. Who reaches out to Hennepin County? You? I, I, I'm every combination of Robert Slipka and myself. So he's worked with them a lot on different projects, you know, so let's say it's worth a shot. Tell them that they don't want to have to deny handicapped people <laughs> access. <laughs> I think you've shown the two options and be like, this is the other option, and you're really going to push someone in a wheelchair, all this. Like, these are the two options. Yes, yeah, right. Logically, this yeah. one is better. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's everything on our work session. So with that, then we can be adjourned and have a break. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Kathleen. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, John. All those in favor, signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. 4 -oh. If I say 5-0 -oh tonight, then just correct me. <laughs>